The movie opens with a group of Interpol agents in South Africa, led by a woman named Lynn. They are transporting a prisoner and key witness named Keith Sorrow when their convoy of three cars stops at a checkpoint near the Congo border. Suddenly, they are ambushed by armed men, leading to a shootout in which nearly all the Interpol agents are killed, leaving only Lynn to survive and escape with Keith. Next, we meet Travis Conrad, a former contract assassin, who is fishing with his father-in-law Frank. They are at the beach to scatter the ashes of Travis's wife and son, who died a year ago. After dropping Frank off at home, Travis heads to a bar to buy cocaine. There, he notices two men following him. He confronts them in the restroom and learns they are from Red Mountain, an agency he previously worked for. They inform him that Jim wants to see him. Although Travis knows Jim and has retired from killing, Jim offers him a job to kill someone, initially refusing. However, when Jim offers him a million dollars a day, Travis agrees. That night, Travis prepares for the job by reviewing photos of his target, Keith Zara. Keith, a former soldier and hitman for Red Mountain, is an important witness protected by Interpol. He knows a damaging secret about the agency, making him a target. Jim also instructs Travis to kill Lynn, the Interpol agent protecting Keith, who turns out to be a mother with one child. Travis hesitates upon learning his target is a mother but decides to proceed professionally. The scene then shifts to Hong Kong, where Lynn is having a video call with her son. Travis, already in Hong Kong, visits her home under the pretense of being an old college friend. He only meets her son and mother, who inform him that Lynn will leave for South Africa the following morning. Travis arranges a flight to South Africa to follow her and, upon tracking her down there, delays her flight by hacking the airport's schedule. Lynn, intrigued by Travis, agrees to have dinner with him. After a romantic evening and deep conversation, they go to a hotel. While Lynn is in the bathroom, Travis hacks her phone and prepares to kill her. However, after seeing Lynn, he changes his mind and leaves the hotel. He then informs Jim of Keith Zara's location, but Lynn arrives and confronts Travis, leading to a shootout in which she shoots him in the heart. As Travis is dying, he reflects on his wife, son, and Jim. He then wakes up having a seizure and is treated by a doctor named Ellen. After surviving the critical period, Jim informs him that Red Mountain saved him with various procedures. Travis is astonished when Wetzler, the leader of Red Mountain, arrives and demands Keith Zara's location. Travis provides the information, and Wetzler orders Jim to complete the job. Although Jim initially refuses, he is compelled to comply. Travis asks Jim to untie him, but Jim refuses and calls Dr. Ellen to expedite the process. Travis discovers that he should have died but that an illegal experiment ordered by Wetzler brought him back to life for 24 hours to reveal Keith Zara's location. Upon hearing this, Travis escapes with Dr. Ellen as his hostage, killing the guards in the process. He checks the time remaining on his hand, realizing he is only 20 hours left. Travis then calls Frank to inform him that he might not return safely, and afterward, he hijacks a taxi. The scene shifts to Keith Zara being interviewed by United Nations representatives under tight security. Keith reveals that during his time with Red Mountain in Congo, he discovered 70 dead local residents whose bodies were mutilated. These bodies were part of an illegal Red Mountain experiment and were burned to erase evidence. Red Mountain had paid Keith to keep this secret, but his guilt compelled him to disclose everything. Suddenly, a bullet pierces the wall, creating chaos. Jim, responsible for the shot, orders his men to attack Keith's location. Keith quickly secures the camera with his confession, while Lynn protects the witnesses and evidence. A gunfight ensues, resulting in many officers being killed, and Keith is shot in the leg. As Lynn tries to get him out, Travis arrives in a car, crashing into Jim's men and instructing Lynn and Keith to get in. Although Lynn is initially distrustful of Travis, she has no other option. During their escape, Travis drives with a gun pointed at him while arguing with Lynn and Keith as Red Mountain's men fire at them. Travis inquires about what makes Keith so critical to Red Mountain, but Lynn refuses to divulge, citing classified information. Another gunfight erupts, but Lynn and Travis manage to handle it. Just as they think they've escaped, Jim shoots Keith, who dies from blood loss. Keith manages to save the memory card from the camera, which Lynn takes to present to the United Nations. Elsewhere, Jim finds the camera with Keith's confession but notices the memory card is missing. He reports this to Wetzler, who threatens to kill Jim's family if the evidence isn't found. In a desperate move, Jim kidnaps Lynn's son, Christopher. 
Meanwhile, Lynn and Travis lay Keith's body at the harbor. Lynn begins to trust Travis, particularly after he reveals that he will not survive long and discloses the illegal experiments conducted by Dr. Ellen on Red Mountain's orders. Lynn then receives a call from Jim, who threatens to kill her son if she doesn't provide the memory card. Devastated by the threat, Lynn is reassured by Travis's promise to help save her son. That night, Travis and Lynn devise a plan to rescue Christopher. During their mission, Travis experiences hallucinations of his son Adam, his wife Kate, and memories from past assassination missions, causing him both mental and physical distress as his time dwindles. They stop at Travis's house to gather weapons, supplies, and explosives for their plan. Then, Travis introduces Lynn to Emily, an old friend from Africa, who agrees to help after hearing about the horrific Red Mountain experiments. The next day, Red Mountain troops led by Zach arrive in Congo with Christopher, preparing for an exchange with Lynn and Travis. Emily and his men are also ready to strike. Travis offers Zach over $300,000 to release Christopher, but Zach refuses. Emily arrives, calling the locals to encircle Zach and his troops. Travis warns Zach to comply to avoid bloodshed in the residential area. However, Travis collapses as his condition worsens. Zach attempts to kill him, but Emily quickly shoots and kills Zach. A battle breaks out between Red Mountain's troops and Emily's men. Travis, still weak, convinces Lynn that her son is not in the car that has been exploded, and he then chases the other car, rescuing Christopher. Seeing Lynn and Christopher together, Travis is reminded of happy times with his own wife and son. With only 36 minutes left to live, Travis asks Lynn to deliver the evidence to the authorities while he destroys Red Mountain alone. He forces one of Zack's henchmen to take him to Red Mountain's headquarters. Travis recalls Jim's revelation from a year ago that his wife and son were killed by an enemy, and both Wetzler and Jim notice Travis's arrival. Wetzler threatens to kill Frank if Travis continues to destroy Red Mountain and refuses to surrender the evidence. Travis calls Frank but receives no response. Feeling weaker, Travis recklessly crashes his car into Red Mountain's headquarters, causing part of the building to collapse. Meanwhile, Frank manages to eliminate the Red Mountain members who had invaded his home. Travis escapes from the car, attacks the building's security system, and detonates his car, causing widespread damage. In a state of panic, Wetzler orders his men to prepare a helicopter for his escape and to kill Lynn and her son. Despite his weakened state and a shoulder injury, Travis fights off Wetzler's men one by one. As he approaches Wetzler's room, he hallucinates seeing his son. He enters the room just before the helicopter arrives, aiming a gun at both Wetzler and Jim. Wetzler reveals that he had ordered Jim to kill Travis's family to prevent him from retiring as a Red Mountain assassin, threatening Jim's family to ensure compliance. With only three minutes left to live, Travis shoots Wetzler in the shoulder. As Jim faces imminent death, he cancels the mission to kill Lynn and her son, allowing Lynn to hand over the evidence of Red Mountain's crimes to the authorities. Jim then attempts to kill Wetzler but is shot dead by Wetzler's henchmen. Both Wetzler and Jim die while Travis savors his final moments. The scene then shifts to Travis on a beach, hearing the voices of his wife and son calling him. Afterward, he is shown waking up in a treatment room, leaving it uncertain whether Travis survived or if it was his final hallucination before death.